Hi, I'm Craig Leon, and I'm at Amoeba Records in Los Angeles, and this is what's in my bag. I found this, which is virtually everything of the 13th floor elevators, a great garage band that everybody knows about. But it's good to have everything. It's got stereos and monos of each album, so you can actually tell which one's which. And it's probably got much better pressings than the original international artists, which are pretty crap. Well, Monkey Island is cool. Fire Engine, which television used to cover down at CBGB's. It was almost as good if it was on the right night. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're like the roots of a lot of the American punk guitar stuff. And they were like a garage band that came out of middle America. Strangely enough, that, that's probably one of the only guitar things I came up with today. And I would normally have a bunch of them, but I found all this other stuff. Oh wait, here's a guitar record. But it's a totally, and now for something completely different. Joseph Spence was from the Bahamas and played kind of an idiosyncratic guitar style. I like, like guitar players that, that don't play in any genre. And he, he created his own, and he sings, if you remember uh, Popeye, when he used to mumble under his breath in cartoons. He sings like that along with it. So he'll play and he'll jam like, uh, do little arpeggiated guitar things, looks like a dom. And he'll go, like that, scat singing at the same time. Fabulous stuff and wonderful guitar player. And you wouldn't have Ry Cooter, who's an LA legend, if you didn't have Joseph Spence, I'll tell you that. So um, <laughs> here you go. This was brilliant to find that. And this is an original, I believe, in A condition, which is good. These show up really crackly and stuff usually, and this, this won't be. Something that isn't a reissue, one of my favorite records ever, I used to collect 78s. I don't have that many left, but I used to love Duke, the Texas label, you know, the Houston label that had this, had a little Richard and uh, early stuff and a bunch of other things on it. This is probably one of the, 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 the best records that, for me that they did. This is Pledging My Love by Johnny Ace who was, uh, wasn't more known because he had the unfortunate experience of um, playing Russian roulette backstage at a gig one night and winning, so to speak, backstage right when this was a hit. And he's the subject of a song by Paul Simon, which I was going to try and find with it, called The Late Great Johnny Ace. And every song we played was for the late great Johnny Ace. That whole album that has that on it, which I didn't find here, Hearts and Bones, it's got that, and it's got another one, Renee and Georgette Magritte and their dog after the war, which is a, a, probably my favorite Paul Simon song of all time. But there you go. We can keep that one nice. It's only $1.99. That's amazing. I'll never part from you and your loving way. Just for fun, uh, I turned up one of the endless follow-ups to work with me, Annie, the, by uh, the Midnighters. This is, a, again, on Federal. This is, this is gonna be an original. Yeah, it is. It's a not in great shape, so it's $1.99. But uh, the Midnighters, I don't know if you know the Midnighters, but they had uh, one big hit. So, which is a kind of a simulated sex song or something, you know? And um, they thought the formula worked, so, they did the same riff over again and sang new lyrics, and they did about four follow-ups. And this is the ultimate follow-up, because the follow-up to work with me, Annie, of course, should be Annie Had a Baby. Definitely, if you're into follow-ups, this is the ultimate one. If, you, if, if you're lucky enough to find the Midnighter's greatest hits, it's the same bloody song with different lyrics, like 12 times over, which is really good marketing. L.A. legend time, Van Dyke Parks did this album, I don't know the exact year, 72. He did authentic cover versions of his favorite 78 Calypso records uh, and Trinidad records actually. Most of these were all Trinidad. It's a 
the, the bus from Trinidad to Hollywood, you see. And he had all these great players and everything. And, his, and those were the days when a big record company like Warner Brothers Records would give this guy a whole bunch of money to go in and record, you know, covers of 1978 Trinidadian folk songs. Sweet Trinidad, sweet, sweet Trinidad, darling, keep your home fires burning. Use gas, don't burn any wood. These are some of the greatest hits of Trinidadian music, but done by him. Uh, it's, it's, I think there's a Folkways collection that has all the originals of these, but I didn't have time to go looking for it. But L.A. Legend covers Trinidad. It's uh, really cool. And speaking of legends, this is probably a really crap album. I remember hearing it, but I was probably on LSD at the time and, 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 and can't remember what it was like. It's the uh, turn on, tune and drop out psychedelic celebration soundtrack of the film by Tim Leary, who was also a bit of an LA legend at the time. He lived here for a while. The trip is what he's talking about, obviously. The turn on the tune in, <laughs> the beginning of the voyage, heart chakra, yes, yes, yes. All girls are yours, that's a good one for a nerd. All those girls are yours. It's probably not as well produced as hair. But it's probably got a lot of the same <laughs> similar <laughs> similar stuff going on. This is a reissue. Mercury always did the cheesy stuff in the 60s, and it's particularly the, the San Francisco stuff. <laughs> if you find the Fort Mudge Memorial Dump, that's a good psychedelic band on, on Mercury from that time as well. And the charlatans here on Phillips are subsidiary label. Okay, let's get serious. This is a guy that is very influential on the, the, the writing of my own work and a number of people that are doing it, as well as um, Christoph Pendereski. It's got Threnody for the Victims of Hiroshima on it, which is one of the scariest pieces of modernist classical music you can find. I mean, his stuff is just amazing. He has a tremendous amount of work. He did some synth records when he was younger and then decided he could do it better with real instruments and if they were played in weird ways. And so he educated his orchestra how to do that. So the Symphony of Krakowia was the band that he trained. There you go. P Pendereski, Poland. The Amanda Gallus. This is a fantastic record. The End of the Epidemic 1984 Plague Mass, live. This is one of her greatest pieces. And it's a live concert, live recording by the record plant Mobile. Kurt Monkesey, who produced all of Philip Glass's stuff and engineered it, did it. So it's going to be good quality. And if you find it, get it. One more, I think. This is um, a straight classical record. And I don't know anything about the performance. A guy named Dag Aschatz is playing it, but he's playing it on Liszt's own piano. When you, when you play something on, on the pianist of the guy who wrote it, it'll have a sound like he heard it in his head, obviously, when he wrote it. So I just wanted to see what he would sound like, because all, all these are pieces that everybody knows, you know, you know, nothing revelatory there, but how his music sounds on a chickering piano, which is why in the hell did he have an American piano in Budapest? So, this is this is research. So, <laughs> so there you go. And I think that was about it. Thank you so very okay, much. Okay, there you go. 